we might be living in end times, ladies and gentlemen, because when you got gamers tearing everything apart, you know it's going down, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, the BBC Samurai situation still raging wildfires in Japan, but of course, gamers are now bringing the hammer down alongside it. Like the video if you think there are two genders. Dislike the video if you think there are 5,000 genders. And guys, you're not gonna believe this. Shout out to the homie Andy Pants Gaming, and uh-oh, roll it. Does anybody else feel like masculinity has slowly been drained from modern video games? I was looking at recent staff photos of Ubisoft and Halo Infinite developers, and it's all starting to make sense. It's a bunch of fat white liberal women. And white liberal women have no interest in masculine, manly, male characters. They wouldn't even know how to write one if they tried. This is why Rockstar, a company founded by men that at least in 2018 was still mostly run by men, created the magnum opus Red Dead Redemption 2, a game with a man- He ain't lying, but- Manly, well-written main protagonist, Arthur Morgan. If you want to see the seismic shift away from masculine characters, honestly, all you need to do is play a few games from 2006, and you'll yeah. see exactly what I'm- I would say games back then, uh, back in 2010s as well. Yeah, 2010s, I, I believe that was like the- that was the peak, man. We were getting so many good games on PS3 and Xbox 360, and now it, it'd be like that. But don't worry, bro. Like, you know, Red Dead Redemption 3, it's going to be Lizzo Morgan. Don't worry about, about it. They're going to do that. Consider how many masculine military games came out in the 2000s. Medal of Honor, Call of Duty, Brothers in Arms, Gears of War. Oh, Op man, that Call of Duty World at War was so good, man. That campaign slaps even to this day, bro. Operation Flashpoint, Rainbow Six, Ghost Recon, Splinter Cell. All of these games were starring men and had themes like brotherhood, duty, sacrifice, honor. Almost all of these franchises have either been killed off, turned into multiplayer games, or went woke. Mm. I often wonder why <laughs> so few modern games appeal to me. And I think oh. another big reason is this. Everything is just so gay now. Compare yeah. the games I just mentioned to the modern trash we have to deal with in Overwatch and Apex. Almost every character in these new games is either gay, lesbian, bisexual, trans, or something else. Like. What happened to a masculine dude with a hot chick on his arm? I love the idea of Xbox Game Pass, but I swear every time I open it up and look for new games, there's just so many games that look gay now. I refuse to play an <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, yo, tranquilo, papi, tranquilo. Bro got no filter on. He got no, but, but is he lying though? Is he lying though? Is he lying though? You see the shift and it's like, Every in what's up with these seconds right now? Why every black guy in game is gay right now? Why? Like why? And, and you know this was a perfect example. We talked about it numerous times. Yasuke, real life person, history, real life history person, was not gay, and they made him gay even if even when he was not. If he was, makes sense. But you see what I mean, right? Like damn, situations crazy right now. And we just saw like another black dude who's also gay uh, as well. Right, the fictional. I, I guess. I guess this time it's a fictional black character, but another still cutesy crazy, 2D man. platformer or a game with a cutesy art style by some indie developer anymore. I'm just done with these games. If you want my 100% real thoughts on this, I just think the entire video game industry has gone woke and gay, and almost nothing they are making appeals to me in any way anymore. So this is why I mostly play 20-year-old games on my channel because they were Damn. just better. I was recently reading an insider interview about what went down at Volition Studios with the disastrous Saints Row reboot from an inside source. This source said that the LGBTQ community within the- See, another black guy being gay, being made gay. Like, what's up with these suckers? Why every- Bro, like, damn, man, they always make a black guy gay. The company was actually pretty small, but they are the loudest and the most annoying, and the company leadership chose to promote these people into key roles. And that's how you get the absolute dumpster fire of a game that was Saints Row 2022. I think what you have at a lot of these game studios is about 80% of the staff is probably just hetero dudes trying to do their job, but they're afraid of speaking up or saying what they actually think, and then you have the mm. LGBTQ folks making decisions about what kind of game to make. And everything just ends up being safe and soft, soft and sensitive and because, oh, we can't hurt anybody's feelings. So, of course, you get these shitty... By hurting nobody's feeling, by trying to make the game for everybody, they end up making the game for nobody. And this game, prime example. I was actually looking forward to this game. I was like, uh, this game might carry us till GTA 6. It couldn't even carry us till GTA 6 teaser, my guy. <laughs> yeah, they shut, down, they shut down the studio before we even got the teaser for the game. The dumpster fire video games that nobody wants to play. After reading a lot of insider interviews of these developers, this is my sense of what has been happening. I also feel like there's this kind of unholy alliance right now between games journalists, white liberal women at game studios, and the LGBTQ community at game studios. And they all seem to be united around one thing. They actually hate gamers. gamers yeah. And who are gamers overwhelmingly? Well, heterosexual dudes like us, of course. 
This recent Reddit thread was written by an actual game developer and made me realize this. It reads, headline, Am I allowed to say this? I kinda hate gamers. I'm a professional game designer and I'm worried that I'm starting to hate gamers. Watching the gaming events on YouTube last month with the chat on was an extremely disheartening experience. Every time a character that wasn't a cishet white man appeared on screen, the chats would fill with messages calling the game woke or complaining about DEI. Every game that wasn't a shooter or a hyper-casual competitive online game garnered zzz and boring comments. Because those games suck. Like, even, uh, I remember, like, whenever I live stream, like, a reveal event, if a game, if a game sucks, game sucks. And then people tell you, zzz, zzz, people drop zzz, zzz, next, this and that, because the game sucks. Because it's, or, it's not even that the game sucks, it's more like the game isn't grabbing, it's not the right game for the target audience. You have lost the plot, and now you're blaming gamers though. Like, damn man, make the games for gamers and gamers would love it. And, and I'll tell you this straight away, bro. Gamer, the, the kind of people that play games, the gamers, right, that you call toxic, gamers are the only species or... <laughs> the gamers are, gamers are the only people on Earth that would give your game 10 out of 10, even when your game is like 6 out of 10, right? Like, gamers would give your game 10 out of 10. Easy! But also, make no mistake, the other way is also true. Uh, the opposite is also true. If the game is, let's just say, uh, you try to uh, belittle the fan base, you try to drop crazy amount of microtransactions and the game sucks, and it's like, let's just say realistically 3 or 4 out of 10, gamers would give it 0 as well, gamers would give it 1. So the, the opposite is true too, but you gotta understand that if you make a good game, for your target audience and you make a game for simply put make the game for gamers if you make the game for gamers gamers would give it easy nine easy ten i've seen people implying that the mc in fable trailers is ugly because it's a self-insert of some random level designer working at playground whom they deemed not fuck <laughs> but but it is ugly though it is ugly and i talked about it in one of the last video as well uh, but it's true though like if you're somebody let's just say like if you're somebody that's lgbt watching this video right like uh, just ask yourself this, why do they always make y'all suckers ugly like that, right? Like, damn, what the actual hell? Like, they, they, are, they are the ones, not gamers, not me, not people watching this video, nobody, none of us is saying that, but they are the ones directly saying that you guys are effing ugly. Yeah, and, and this is a dude, by the way, this is not a woman. This is not a woman, it's a dude that's dressed up as a female, and they have made him ugly. So they are saying that the LGBT, LGBT people, the LGTV people are ugly. They are the ones saying that. Ask yourself this question. Why do you think that is? Cool enough. I don't know. It's just the internet magnifying negative voices, I guess, doing what it does best. But it's making me real tired of gamers. So at this point, it seems that games journalists and all of the liberal LGBT mafia that work at game studios actually hate their audience. And this is a comment I keep reading from you guys again and again. I swear they literally hate us. They seem to be dead set on giving their audience exactly what we don't want. How long is your business going to be open if you're dead set on not giving the customer what they want? Mm -hmm. This is why when skanks like Alyssa Mercante are crying about Kotaku shutting down and losing their jobs, and game studios are going under because they were associated with Sweet Baby Inc., I just laugh. Let them burn. Let all these companies burn who don't know how to give the audience. The wonderful irony in all this is that it's the very games that the woke cancel mob has tried to cancel that seem to do the best. Yeah. Remember Hogwarts Legacy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, men who dress in women's clothes tried to get it canceled. Yeah. Instead, the game sold... And the game sold like crazy, but make no mistake though, even uh, Hogwarts Legacy still had representation. It had like a, a bar bar guy trance in the game, right? So they, they still, uh, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, they still had representation in the game, but they were like, no man, we gotta cancel the game, we gotta cancel the game. 25 million copies. Oops. Remember Elden Ring? Remember how the woke mob tried to accuse FromSoft games of having, quote, problematic depictions of women? Oops, sold 25 million copies. At this point, making an offensive game seems to guarantee that game success. success. Yeah. We could talk about Stellar Blade, pissing off all of the liberal progressives, and yet everybody went out and bought it. Okay, so in the rest of this video, I want to give you four examples of a game or game series going from masculine to feminine or gay, and it basically either killed or ruined the franchise. Number one, Ubisoft and Red Storm Entertainment. So Red Storm Entertainment was a video game company founded by the legendary Tom Clancy to make Tom Clancy video games. He sold the company to Ubisoft in the year 2000, and Ubisoft in the 2000s actually had some balls and made some of the manliest games you've ever seen. Yeah. There were the Splinter Cell games, the Ghost Recon games, the Rainbow Six games, and the Far Cry games. All of these games pretty much feature exclusively men, and these IPs in the yeah. 2000s had so much testosterone, just a single glance from a woman in their direction would get her pregnant. 
<laughs> Yo, what? No, I would, I would go as far as to say, you playing the game for an hour straight, you would grow a chest full of hair. You will have actual testosterone. Like your testosterone, testosterone would overcharge by playing these manly game, manly games back in the days. I mean, motherfucking Sam Fisher, come on. The dude mm. is the ultimate Giga Chad. Scott Mitchell and Ghost Recon. Now you pick your own character in Far Cry 2, but it's definitely a manly game that will put hair on your chest. So yeah. what is Red Storm Entertainment up to today? Well, I recently saw that Tom Clancy's The Division Heartland is being led by a man who dresses in women's clothes in his free time. Now look, I don't give a shit if you want to identify as a dragon and go around laying magic eggs, but can we agree that the least masculine thing on earth you can do is dress in women's clothes? Damn. Tom Clancy would be rolling over I mean, he ain't wrong though, and I don't care. Yeah, you wanna like put your pee pee and poo poo, go for it, right? Like I don't care what you do behind, uh, uh, behind closed doors, uh, right? Like yeah, you do you, bro. Like you do you, boo boo. But but damn, man, like can a brother just get like good games? And objectively speaking, like forget about all this woke crap, right? We know because of this woke crap, games quality is going down because they rather push out uh, this uh, all of this trash in games than making a good objectively good game right they rather do that they rather be uh, they rather let activists make their games than actually making good games for the gamers objectively speaking bro like games are not good quality wise graphics might have improved and in some cases i mean you look at ubisoft games right now like star wars assassin's creed right assassin's creed uh shadows look like it looks like new york city when you watch the gameplay right now so <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're being racist towards black black people. They're being ultra racist towards Asian people as well, spe specifically Japan, and just uh, trashing everybody right now, just spitting on everybody's uh, culture right now, spitting on gamers as well. And, and yeah, gamers are now collectively waking up, which is really, really good to see. We're in his grave right now if he knew the absolute disaster that Red Storm Entertainment had become. Number two, Wolfenstein. So I was recently playing Wolfenstein The New Order for the first time, which came out in 2014. And I have to say, of all the games I was sure were going to avoid woke Western progressivism, this game was pretty high up there. Wrong, the first three entries of the reboot were all fantastic. They had the badass BJ Blazkowicz, an absolute unit, as the main character, ripping apart entire armies of Nazis with the sexy and smart Anya as his arm candy and wife. Machine Game's first three Wolfenstein entries, which came out in 2014, 2015, and 2017, are all great. They have normal but, men and women doing normal shit in them. Awesome. Uh -oh, uh -oh. But of course, the woke mob had to get involved somehow. So you have a beloved series with a beloved, tough, male, manly main character. Do you suppose it's a good idea to kill off that guy and replace him with cringy girl boss characters? What? Wolfenstein Youngblood came out in 2019 and it's an absolute tone deaf disaster. So many modern video games I find myself- it's, it's like the same thing, right? Like they, they killed Joel in The Last of Us 2. They killed Joel uh, as well, right? Like, yeah, the reason, the reason, we all know the reason, like let's not even kid about it, right? Like, damn, bro, Last of Us 1 was a masterpiece, bro. You had dad and uh, dad and child bond there, right? It was a zombie game, so zombie survival game, single player game, in uh, Naughty Dog, story, it's PlayStation exclusive on top. Story was amazing, man. You see a dad, a father and daughter's relationship as well. It's a survival zombies game, too. So, like, damn, man, like, the game was amazing, man. And these suckers... Turn around and they kill Joel for that uh, Abby the Brock Lesnar guy. And, and then you want to know what Abby the Brock Lesnar guy does in game? He get his ass pounded in 4K. <laughs> Ray tracing. And, and to Stellar Blade, to Eve, they said, Brother Ew, Brother Ew. That's what they said. That's what they said. Just like insanity, man. Can we just get good games, bro? Like that's it, bro. Simple as that. We just want good games, man. Like damn. So asking, who wanted this? Who asked for this? I, I, I would even go as far as to say that even people in the LGTV crowd would would be like saying, most of them at least, the, the sane one, right? They would be saying that, yeah, bro, this is too much, right? We want just good products because I read all my comments and there are people, some some people are saying, hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm gay, this and that, uh, and, and uh, like this is just way too much right now, like I don't like these games as well. So everybody's having enough right now, generally speaking, generally speaking and ask the same thing of and all of this that they're doing it doesn't benefit anybody like it, it, they are they they are the ones that are saying that we're the racist one but they are the ones that are actually racist and trying to divide everybody 
there, there's no winning here. People are hating each other even more right now. But one thing that is uh, clear, gamers are coming together right now. So gamers are uniting. That's the, the biggest positive out of all this. And that is very, very good. That is very, very good. Like the video if you agree. The new Star Wars shows by Kathleen Kennedy as well. The Wolfenstein reboot had the perfect synergy of story and gameplay. You are BJ Blazkowicz unleashing his rage on the Nazis for killing everyone he loved. You see this come across in his brutal assassinations, like sticking a rusty pipe through the eye socket of an SS Waffen commander. But the setup to Wolfenstein Youngblood is incredibly cringe. In it, you play as BJ's daughters and they're honestly nothing like him. The first time you kill somebody, they don't really want to do it. And when they finally kill the guy, they have to have lattes and talk about it afterwards. Bruh. Youngblood is a perfect example of how a cutscene can go so, so wrong in a game. BJ's setup is perfect and explains to you why you're doing the actions you're doing. BJ's daughters, however, are acting- And you see the haircuts as well, right? There's a reason for it, folks. There's a reason for it. Damn, bro. Now, once you see it, you cannot unsee it. The uh, and, and it's not just in one game or two games. It's like everywhere. It's everywhere, bro. Like, damn, bro. Can we just get good games, bro, without the without all of this uh, uh, like crap in it? Like they're in an episode of Big Bang Theory the whole time. But oh yeah, they just happen to be killing Nazis. And haha, isn't this so funny? It's tonally all over the place and just so full of cringy and awful cinematics, which is ironic because the cinematics in the first three games were, were like so good and short and they got to the point and they were really emotional and impactful. Example mm. number three, Gears of War. For a full explanation of how the woke mob girl bossed Gears of War, see my video on that game, but I'll keep this short. The first three Gears games are an incredible trilogy focusing on the bonds and brotherhood between men. They're incredibly masculine games, focusing on duty and sacrifice and military orders. And I know some of you hate this, but for 10,000 years, it's only been men fighting wars. Sorry. The first three games focus on Marcus, Dom, Cole, and Baird and tell a masculine story of brotherhood. Well, the progressive woke mob uh -oh. somehow got uh -oh. to Gears of War and Gears 4 and 5 are about sisterhood, motherhood, <laughs> being a traitor, and what it feels like to be a oh woman. They introduced the character of Kate Diaz, who I don't think anybody gives a single fuck about. What they should have done is put Kate in a spin-off game, not a mainline Gears entry. But here's the problem. Everything, bro. Every game that is about, like, brotherhood, that's a quality franchise, has been turned this bad. You know, even Call of Duty, I remember, like, seeing that, uh, let me actually show you guys, Firecracker, Skin, uh, Nerf, something like that. Let me actually try to find with the keywords there, right? Yeah, this one right here, this one right here. <laughs> So even Call of Duty, like Firecracker skin, right? Now, I, I don't know much about Firecracker or anything like that. Maybe it's part of the show or something. You see this, right? So initially, they did release a skin and it was good, right? People loved it. And I mean, gamers loved it way too much, okay? Of course, like, gamers were going crazy and they started liking it way too much, okay? Suckers were simping, let me be clear here. Suckers were simping uh, because uh, she actually had a big ass burna or something like Yeah, big ass burna, you see that? And then they nerfed it after selling the skin for $20. Bruh. Like, <laughs> so they reduced the content. So the content got reduced, but people did not get their money back after it. So the product don't work now. The product was working is what people are saying on the internet before. Okay, I didn't buy the skin. Uh, this is a perfect example of, hey, you should not be buying microtransactions, but okay, whatever, man, it's your money, you do you, right? So suckers bought the microtransactions, and after that, they, they reduced the content. They reduced the content. Problem, of course, nobody would have bought it. So unfortunately, Gears 4 and 5 are basically girl boss, feminist Gears of War, and Damn. any masculine story about men is put on the back burner. Of course, the games include Baird and Marcus in them, but they're really on the back burner. And Gears is now about Kate Diaz, who I've never talked to a Gears fan. And I suppose, and I wonder who ruined that, right? White liberal woman uh, again? Probably, probably white liberal woman always ruining crap for gamers. And even cares about. Moving on, example number four, the Saints Row reboot. Saints Row spent 10 years building up characters and building up a very distinctive and edgy and male sense of humor. It's the kind of stuff you and the guys would laugh at. Some of the recurring characters in Saints Row are Johnny Gat, Julius, Aisha, Shondi, and several others. In these games, the men are men and the women are women. Johnny is edgy and hilarious and always has a hot chick on his arm. The mm -hmm. humor is crude mm -hmm. and hilarious mm -hmm. and the Saints are always getting into trouble. So what went wrong with the reboot? Well, I was actually looking forward to this game. I, I would be lying if I said I was not. I was looking forward to this game. I was like, this game is gonna, like I said earlier and previously as well, when this game was the, the hot topic. I wish this game carried me, carried me till GTA 6, guys. Damn, homie. And they shut down the studio before we could even get a GTA 6 teaser. Damn, bro. Well, Damn, the Woke homie. 2022 reboot thought it was a good idea to kill off every single character from the old Saints Row games. And I guess they thought we would be cool with that. 
But don't worry, all of the beloved characters you've come to know and love have been replaced with tokenistic characters from a literal seminar on diversity. Mm. You've got the gay Asian man, the girl boss lesbian, another girl boss lesbian, and the gay black guy. Yeah. The LGBTQ mafia didn't just kill Saints Row, they crucified it on a rainbow flag. Damn. And this is what you get, guys. This is what you fuckers get for supporting. Not even a single straight guy in game, or I guess a single straight girl in the game. Holy crap. Holy crap. These people. They turn out shitty, shitty games that aren't funny, that aren't cool, that aren't masculine. So and forgetting about the woke stuff for a minute, I mean you cannot because like, yeah, it's it's just sad and pathetic and hilarious. But forgetting about the woke stuff for a second, like look at the game, it just don't even look good. Like objectively, graphic sucks, gameplay sucked as well, presentation sucks, story sucked as well. Everything sucked about this game. No wonder why they shut down after, right? Stop hiring these people. Game developers need to stop putting gay stuff in games and they need to fire every liberal white woman if they want us to ever buy a game again. Because I'm serious, we are done with this shit. We're not mm. buying these games. Like Phil Spencer is out here complaining about how people aren't spending as much money on games anymore. I guarantee if you give us hetero dudes, hot chicks and games again and mainly men, you will see sales go through the roof. Yeah. Bring back the glory. Yeah, yeah, bring back the glory disc. Bring back the good games. Right, like we we wanna we wanna feel that crap too, bro. Like we wanna we want good games, man. Brothers in Arms, Hell's Highway. Damn, you look at this is how old how old is this game? Twenty years, something like that, right? Look at the cover art of this game. Holy crap! Look at this art. Twenty year old game. Look, ha, ha, uh, twenty year old game cover has more testosterone. Man, that's crazy. You look at this, man. You look at look at this one. Twenty twenty four version. Holy crap! Twenty twenty one. This is a. Uh, what game is this from? Uh, the, uh, I believe Apex Legend, right? Apex Legend, maybe? Three days of video games. I have this theory that in a few years, we're going to see a turn back to the golden era of video we games. We have to. And people are going to start buying games again. Yeah. I recently saw this crazy chart from 2023 that basically showed that people are only playing old. The crazy, and this is what I said in one of uh, the recent videos as well, right? Like, it's going to get worse before it gets better. What I mean by this is that they already have so many games in development right now that is probably gonna get the woke stuff in the game right and games take times to come out they take time to come out so it's gonna get worse before it gets better and uh if we keep pushing on this crap right and we don't want uh, and we keep voicing with our uh wallets I, I think the next uh the next five years might be bad but after that it might actually starts to be slowly but surely starts to go it's gonna start to get better and better which is what we want we just want good games guys check out this video on the screen this was the last episode that we made this is absolute insane video man insane video check out this video on the screen if you already seen it then check out the video on the left we got new leaks about gta 6 as well so check it out and i'll see you right there